Okay, so for our project, we were interested in designing a molten salt test reactor to be built at Oak Ridge National Lab. And uh, as a little background on molten salt reactors, most conventional light water reactors use solid fuel. However, the molten salt uses liquid fuel that is dissolved in fluoride salts as both fuel and coolant. We think it's a much safer and superior design. So we have to, we hope to actually complete this design and submit it to DOE for uh, construction at Oak Ridge. And, uh, we're interested in about well, one megawatt for, for test purposes. We could go up to 20 megawatts. We're trying to keep it under 20 megawatts to keep it as a Cat 2 facility uh, according to DOE standards. So one megawatt is a simple natural circulation driven loop. Natural circulation is big because we don't want to add in any more loops, any more added complexity. It can be as simple as possible. So we have uh, a little few aspects of the design that we've been working on here, and a uh, few little aspects that we think are, are far superior. So I'll give you a brief description of how the thermal hydraulics work. Uh, so for the thermal hydraulics, it was very important that we had a um, Reynolds number of 10,000. And um, in order to do that, we designed our code to, uh, uh, we designed our code to, um, uh, build off that reference over 10,000. We calculated all of our values uh, past that. And so we have a delta change of uh, roughly 150 degrees Celsius in, uh, in the core, and roughly the same amount, uh, 140 some degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. And then from that Reynolds number, um, he assumes a uh, power output of uh, one megawatt. And then I took that and I uh, normalized the core parameters around that to get a K effective of just over one. So that we can uh, run the reactor, um, and then I added six reflectors, and they're uh, they're control drums. So this is poison, this is reflector, and what that does is it allows us to control the K effective of the reactor, make sure that it's safe. We can scram the reactor by turning in the control drums all, um, so that the neutron poison here is facing the reactor to get the uh, K effective below one, and then we can also um, turn them outside to uh, bump up the K-effective as fuel is burned through the core. And then um, we also did tritium source term estimates and um, uh, different isotopes of uh, fission pr uh, products, and that has safety um, implications. So we wanted to mitigate tritium source production, and then we also wanted to uh, minimize plutonium-239 for non-proliferation. Um, so this is a, we have our, our two uh, dose maps here. You can see in the center here, this is our small reactor, just a very simple single loop. And we have it inside a 20 by 20 by 20 foot concrete roof. You can kind of see that here where the dose falls off sharply. So it's inside a 20 by 20 by 20 foot concrete room, and that is inside concrete containment as well. So outside containment, the dose is very low, well under occupational standards. And it's at uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, so obviously it's a controlled facility, and uh, the public dose is negligible, even compared to background. So, and uh, like you mentioned, this is just a brief uh, schematic of our core here. This is our core with the, uh, the uh, fuel salts and coolant salts. It's got graphite moderators in there. And then uh, these are our uh, reflectors. We've got neutron uh, reflectors and poisons here, so we can uh, if we need to scram the reactor quickly, just rotate those around. That will kill it. And uh, a, a big aspect of this design is safety. It's a very passively safe design. In the core, it has a melt plug. If the coolant or the uh, core, the uh, soft slung to the core get too hot above 900 degrees Celsius, that plug will melt and drain the core. So meltdown is, is virtually impossible with this, with this design. And this design has been, has been known about since 1950, so we're hoping it catches up. Thanks.